Please be seated. You ready? Let's go on the record. And good morning. Today is September the 30th of 2022. I'm retired Judge David Landefeld sitting by assignment. And this is a matter of the state of Ohio versus Douglas Kozad. It's uh, 21 CRB uh, 1114. You're Mr. Kozad, is that correct, sir? Correct. And um, Mr. Kozad, you are, you're represented here uh, today by attorney uh, James Fleischer, yes, or Mr. Fleischer. And it's my understanding that there, uh, we were here today for a final pretrial in this matter, but uh, that this matter uh, is going to be resolved through a plea agreement. Uh, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. That's correct, Your Honor. Very well. And um, appearing on behalf of the state of Ohio are attorneys Samuel Kirk and Thomas Anger. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Kirk or Mr. Anger, would you like to state that uh, agreement on the record? Yes, Your Honor. The state understands that there um, is an agreement and that there is a change of plea today uh, to with for Mr. Kozad to withdraw his previously entered not guilty plea and enter a Alford guilty plea to count six of the complaint, which was dereliction of duty, a misdemeanor of the second degree uh, as complicity um, to, to that offense, Your Honor. Uh, the state would nulle the uh, remaining counts one, two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. There's also, as part of the agreement, there is a joint stipulation of restitution of $5,803.59 payable to the school district. And my understanding uh, from defense counsel is that payment has already been made as of today. And the parties would rec recommend a uh, $100 fine and court costs and that upon payment of the fine and court costs that the case be terminated at that time. Uh, the state is not rec recommending any additional uh, fines or probation or jail time. Um, we also, uh, in re uh, due to the cooperation of Mr. Kozad here today, um, I've been authorized by the Auditor of State's Office to reach out to counsel for the Board of Education, inform the Board of Education's counsel that although licensing decisions are entirely their pur purview, the Auditor of State's Office and the Special Prosecutor in this case are not interested in any adverse action on Mr. Kozad's license. Uh, would Your Honor uh, like a, a statement of facts that support the plea today? At this time? I'm sorry? Would Your Honor like a statement of the facts supporting the plea at this time? Uh, well, before you do that, uh, is that your understanding of this uh, agreement? It is, Your Honor. Uh, very well. Then if you would, please read the uh, statement in, into the record, please. <clears throat> Douglas Kozad is the superintendent of Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local School District. Between on or about March 1st, 2019, and on or about September 30th, 2019, in the city of Bellbrook, Greene County, Ohio, acting as a public servant with the state of mind required by law, aided and abetted the governing body of Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local School District to use public funds to publish, distribute, or otherwise communicate information that supported the passage of a levy. This included payment for publication of a postcard, a letter, communication consulting materials, and polling research. The state contends that Dr. Kozad assisted the board in committing the offense, but also recognizes that Dr. Kozad was motivated to assist the board to whom he reported and by whom he was employed and to act for the benefit of the students of his school district. At the time, Dr. Kozad was fairly new to the role of superintendent. There are also potential collateral con consequences for Dr. Kozad with respect to this case's outcome including the potential impact to his license with the Department of Education and the potential for repayment of attorney's fees to the district, which has not been determined. The state also recognizes that Dr. Kozad did not personally profit to any extent from the offense. For these reasons, the state recommends that this court accept the joint recommendation for restitution and terminate the case 
upon payment. Furthermore, provided that the defendant otherwise comply with the statutory conditions for sealing of his record, the state would not object to sealing the record at the appropriate time. Provided that the court adopts the joint recommendations of the parties, the state would waive a PSI and consider this case to be finally discharged upon payment of restitution and any fines or court costs imposed by the court. Mr. Glasser, is that your understanding and uh, do you concur in those, that statement of facts? Yes, Your Honor, that's an accurate rendition of the statement of facts to which we've agreed. Very well. Um, Mr. Flasher, uh, in front of you, I believe, or your client is a plea uh, a waiver form, and has that been um, completed? It has, Your Honor, and it's been uh, signed by both my client and myself. And have you uh, gone over all of the uh, rights that he's waiving with respect to a, a plea in this matter? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Cosette does have a full understanding of the rights that he's giving up. Very well. Based on that, Dr. Cosette, uh, is it your desire to enter, uh, as I understand it, uh, an Alford plea uh, of guilty in this matter? That is correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Fleischer, you have advised him to do so, is that correct? Correct, Your Honor. Um, and you, I assume, have altered the waiver form to reflect that. Is that I've, correct? I have done so, yes. Very well. Um, the court will find that your Alfred plea of guilty is knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently entered. And uh, what do you have on behalf of your client here, Mr. Fleischer? Dr. Kozad would like to make a brief statement to the court, Your Honor. Very well. Uh, Dr. Kozad, you may address the court. It's not necessary. You may speak in your own behalf. It's not necessary, but you may if you wish. Okay, I do. Very well, you, you may proceed. <clears throat> if they want to come in, I can. Yes. Respectfully, Your Honor, I don't believe I violated any laws and I'm innocent of the charges against me, even though, even though I've chosen to accept this resolution today. With regard to my school district's levy, without exception, everything I and the school board did was done in good faith and with the best interests of our school district and its student at heart. Almost immediately after I accepted the Bellbrookshire Creek superintendent position, I was confronted with a district decision that a school levy would need to be placed on the ballot in order to continue to provide our students with the best education we could. I believe then and believe now that such a levy was needed, and as a first-time superintendent, my thought was to follow in the footsteps of my predecessor and other school districts regarding asking parents and other district residents for support by sharing accurate information regarding the levy and what it would mean to our district and students. I consulted with experts in the field who were very familiar with the rules associated with school levies and accepted their advice and counsel in good faith. For many years, there's been a back and forth between the Ohio educational community and the Ohio Auditor of State relating to what can and cannot be said by school districts as it relates to these levies. I've attended conferences and reviewed the current pronouncements from the Ohio Auditor of State and the Ohio Attorney General in an attempt to fully understand the parameters, parameters of acceptable speech as it relates to levies. Unfortunately, the guidance has been less than clear. I understand that a representative from the Auditor's Office has re recently, recently acknowledged that this is a gray area and indicated that new guidance is going to be issued in the near future. I certainly wish it would have been issued in 2019 as I would have very carefully followed it and would not be standing here today. Despite my, despite my firm, firmly held belief that I did nothing wrong, I can, cannot continue to put myself and my family through this ordeal. The financial, emotional, and professional costs by this case have put me in a position in which I must submit this Alfred plea to you. Thank you for hearing my plea. All right, thank you. Uh, do you have anything additional, uh, Mr. Fleischer? No, Your Honor, we'd ask that the court adopt the <coughs> stipulated um, sanctions that we've reached with the state. Very well. Um, well, Dr. Kozad, I, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, and I, I you know, I, I think this may be uh, a message that the auditor's office is sending to all uh, school districts throughout the state, and if school districts want to change uh, how levies are passed, they need to probably see our friends in the Ohio General Assembly. Um, but I, I understand where everyone's coming from here, and based upon the uh, what the state has uh, represented here, uh, the court is finding you guilty. Uh, I am dismissing counts one, two, three, four, 
5, 7, and 8 in this matter. Furthermore, with respect to count 6, uh, the court uh, is imposing a $100 fine in court costs and uh, restitution of $5,803.59 to the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Local School District. It's my understanding that has been paid in advance, so the case will be terminated upon uh, payment of your fine and court costs, and I would concur with the state that uh, within uh, the time permitted, you may have your record sealed. Uh, it's one year, as I understand it, after conclusion of this case. So uh, if the fine and court costs are paid today, then on September 30th of 2023, uh, you may apply for sealing of your record. Is there anything further? No, Your Honor. Thank All you. All right. Good luck to you, sir.